Charles Leiter passed away very suddenly. The papers are missing. I prefer to do things by the book. We're going to perform the autopsy. We will perhaps do it um, probably tonight. Cecil Hunter. Anybody heard of this chap? He done the, the, the painting. What is it that we are missing? I know that you would see it, for you are the expert librarian. Witchcraft, you know. It's all uh, a lot of nonsense, really, these trials. Is it the concept of this Atlantic City breakaway and desperate acts? Oh, the gambling man. Anthony is, uh, he hounded Dr. Leiter night and day. Kirk here had an encounter in the morgue. And what was the eyes like? Can I ask about the I eyes? said I don't want to talk about it, goddammit. Coca-Cola with a twist. There are two men sat in the car. I pull my mask completely off. And I just light a cigarette and stare at the car. Maybe it wasn't a heart attack after all. So what was it? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. So, Lucy, what, what, what do you mean is that he got these rare books and then engaged talented artists to make forgeries, to make copies of them? Oh, the other guy's real sweet. Uh, Abner Wick. My hearing's not so good as it used to be, Mr. Oaks. Did he just threaten us? I think we'll meet again. It's just a sort of weird feeling, like, like you're being watched. My house. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, could you could you repeat that again? His legal guardian was who did you say? Dr. Charles Leiter. Hey, hey Mahoney, don't be afraid to rough him up a little. I know guys like this happen a wick. But in all seriousness, I might add in. Be careful about the mirrors. So you step out into the hard, cold Arkham rain. The Apocalypse Players present Crimson Letters A Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition Scenario by Alan Bly Starring Joseph Chance as Dr. Jonas Steinweg Dannon McAleer as Professor Duckworth Dan Wheeler as Kirk Sleep, P.I. With our special guests, Doug McAndrew as Dr. Althea Montrose and Mike Percival Maxwell as P.J. Mahoney. The keeper of arcane law is Dominic Allen. Chapter 6. Unconsidered Trifles. So, uh, Dr. Montrose... Uh, PJ and Dr. Steinweg, uh, make, you make your way to Unconsidered Travels. Are you taking the car or are you walking? Whose car was it? I take the bus. <laughs> I assume that it was all right to be dropped off on the way. Oh, that's also true. Yeah. I thought it was just, just a couple of blocks away anyway, so... Mm. Yeah. Well, walking, of course, is always an option. Well, either way, you end up um, outside the front of this, um, this shop. It looks very respectable from the outside. It, there's a, something of a faded grandeur about it, which sort of suits it, because it is an antique shop. Um, it's sort of got a green facade, wooden, green wooden facade, and a big window that is stuffed with knick-knacks and old lamps and a rug, and um, it looks like a real Aladdin's cave of, um, of, of sort of stuff. PJ is Im- immediately drawn to all this stuff in the window. Mm. This is exactly the sort of shop that Dr. Montrose could spend an afternoon at. It's a nice lamp. Everything, ha- everything has a tiny, tiny white label with a handwritten price on it that you can't actually read. Um, <laughs> it's one of those places. It's just that like, illegible. A lot of uh, shiny, reflective surfaces, I know. Oh, yeah, a lot of those. Um, and you can't actually see into the shop itself through the window. It's so packed with stuff. OK. And uh, is, is there an open sign? Uh, there is indeed. It is open, and there is a door. Does it look in good repair, or does it look like it's has seen better days? Um, it's in relatively good repair. Perhaps it would be fair to say that it has seen better days. You could do with a lick of paint, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it seems respectable enough. Seems a, a reasonably, be, reasonably profitable enterprise, then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one moment, uh, uh, Dr. Monro- Montrose and uh, PJ, um, do, you think, do you think it is worth having a tactical discussion before we... Plunge in. I couldn't have well, noticed. No, really. I think we'll just work it out. It has to be go, and in she, in she goes. <laughs> no, no, no. The, oh. It's, it's after, after my recent experience with Mister Sleep. Oh, shit! 
Uh, <laughs> and in that word, I do know. Not, not looking back. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. She's a very impetuous young woman. <clears throat> not so young, from my view. But... So you step into, um, into a, this shop. It, it's packed with all sorts of paraphernalia. There's, you know, shelves and shelves of, of objet d'art. Well, stuff ranging from objet d'art down to knickknacks. Um, there's all sorts. There's things hanging off the ceiling. It's really quite um, compressed in there. When you, when you hesitate over the word shop, is it because you're actually looking for the word trap? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, okay. Because um, it's somewhere between a shop and a warehouse. It's sort of just like absolutely rammed with stuff. Can I roll psychology on the GM? Do I believe what you're saying is true? <laughs> you just lied. No, no, he said. No, no. But I'm beginning to think Dom. No. Can I psychologize Dom? Um, P- PJ's going to um, uh, potter about looking at knickknacks mm. and whatnots and. Uh, do hickeys of course. the the other thing I should say that hits you as you go in is there's this is the smell of sort of you know that dusty musky smell is quite heavy but um, amidst this sort of uh, you know bookish smell there is a there is a cloying odor of sort of lavender and uh, tobacco uh, sort of very sweet, very pungent, like an aftershave smell. All right, All right. Like a reptile house. It's not. It's it's not like an incensey sort of smell or anything, is it? Um, PJ's a good Catholic boy. No, it's more like a cologne, mm-hmm. like a like a really over the top floral cologne. And there's no counter by the door. You can just about see through this sort of haze of of cigar smoke. There is a um, there's a counter at the back. The light in here is not very good either. The light doesn't get through that sort of window display of crap very easily. Um, so the light is sort of coming in through a window behind the counter, and it's got, you know, there's like thick dust haze. So all you can see is the sort of silhouettes by the counter. Okay. Uh, yes, Dotum and Troz is looking left and right with a smile in her face and uh, heads towards the counter. I will back her up. Sat in a in a... In a large um, sort of uh, Chesterfield recliner uh, behind the desk is a vastly broad, portly man. He's puffing on a cigar, and as you approach, he sort of he sort of turns his chair around to see you. Um, he's wearing a white, uh, what well, like a cream linen suit. He has a very vivid handkerchief pouring out of the top pocket. He wears a cravat. He's uh, he's he's mustachioed. Uh, he has little pince nez glasses. Um, he goes, ah, how can I help you, my dear? You uh, first time at unconsidered oh, trifle. Right. Yes, yes, it is. It's a marvellous shop for Neil Aladdin's chair. Exactly the sort of place I'd lose an entire afternoon in. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, we get that a lot. You're now aware that the smell is definitely coming from him. He's absolutely plastered in this cologne. And um, is there something specific you're looking for today? Well, why a dabble here and there, knowledge of one sort or another, particularly interested in uh, pieces relating to uh, the early settler times, you know, the pioneers, the late 1600s, occult activities of the sailing witches at their many piers. Ah. Oh. The I dare say I'm in the right place, you know I am. <clears throat> I'm from uh, from Scotland over here, visiting. But uh, yes, indeed, indeed, I'm I I am from the old country myself, the other old country. Oh, indeed, what part? Uh, I, well, all over really, Swindon originally. Anyway, Emerald uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hempstead. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so evocative. <laughs> Swindon, you know, I, I, I don't think I've had the pleasure of uh, of visiting Swindon or indeed any reason whatsoever to visit Swindon. You would, re- but, uh, you would remember it. I, I dear see, I mean, I, I'm Dr. Uh, Dr. Montrose, Dr. Althea Montrose, by the way, have to... And she offers her hand. He takes your hand and he, he, he bends down and kisses it, reaching across the desk to do so. His lips are very, very cold. Um, 
and he lingers slightly too long kissing your hand. It's 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 actually not as charming as he obviously mm. is. And he says, oh, my dear. I'm charmed, I'm sure. My name is Abner Wick. I am uh, the humble proprietor of unconsidered trifles. Mr. Wick, pleased to meet you. And who are your... Are these your colleagues? Uh, yes, they are indeed my colleagues. Uh, most perceptive of you, this is uh, Mr. Mahoney and uh, Dr. Steinweg, and uh, we, in fact, are all colleagues based on our work at the Miskatonic University. How much do you want for this lampstand? <laughs> oh, uh, it's, uh, that is, in fact, um, we'll go very well in our spare room. Uh, well, it's it a fin de siècle uh, lamp. Fin de what? Fin, fin, fin. N means end of the century. End of the century. So, uh, second hand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you two bucks oh, for it. Oh, my dear. My dear, sweet, sweet old man. You, <laughs> you are most amusing. Uh, almost everything here is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, sometimes oh. even ninth hand. But unfortunately, once a certain number of hands it has passed through, it becomes incredibly valuable. Goodness me, mm-hmm. it is like you're describing a Hindu god. I would have thought that it would have got uh, worn, worn out and bits drop off it the more hands it goes through. Like an... Uh, so that happened with uh, with cars as well. Uh, the number of uh, more owners it's had, the more expensive it is. I uh, I am not familiar with automobiles. <laughs> well, um, you were after something colonial and occult. We, we are, in fact, and, and I'm after this lampstand, Mister Mahoney. Would you um, be so kind? Well, he hasn't even said how much he uh, he wants for it. I I, I give you two bucks. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Mahoney. I think if you're willing to pay two dollars for that, Mr. Mahoney, he'll have seen you coming. Uh, yeah, it's a nice, uh, I like the lady on it. Uh, she's very shapely. <laughs> he holds it up and he says, um, you know, the reason that Objet d'art of this era has so many pineapples carved on it is because the pineapple at the time was incredibly valuable. Now, of course, there... I ain't never had a pineapple. Well, for you, this will be one dollar. One dollar. I wouldn't say fairer than that. But that's a special discount I only do for friends. So I do hope we become friends, Mr... Um, Mahoney is the name. Mahoney. I shan't forget that. Ah, um, Dr. Mont... You're Mr. Abnerwick, that's right, isn't it? Mr. Wick, yes. Mr. Abner... Oh, it's a double barrel, is it? No. No. Ah, uh, so your mother was an Abner and your father was a Wick. No, no, no. My father was... My father was a Wick, and my mother... married into the Wicks. Married into Wicks, so a candle maker. <laughs> Something like that. Good trade, candle making. You're always going to need candles. In the dark. It's a fascinating history here in Arkham of the, of the colonial... Um, of the colonial times... Uh, I was wondering, do you, do you have anything relating to the Mason case? You're the Freemasons? No, I mean the Kaziah Mason case. Are you familiar? And specifically, Mr. Wick, the Hawkeye papers. All, all, all my ah. nonsensical chat about um, uh, about um, lamp stands and stuff is really me. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to do a psychology on him. I wanted to try and see what, what kind of... A, especially when they start talking about the Masons. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. Do a, give me a psychology role while you're doing that, and while you're talking to him. As soon as you say this, he's sort of laughing, and he he waddles his way, pressing his way through the shelves and the and the shadows towards the front door of the shop, um, and he turns the sign and locks the door. Uh, well, um, yes, uh, that would be a very specialist area, indeed. Not many people know about the Hob House. Uh, Artifacts. No, um, we were of a, a great deal of interest to a number of people at the university. Not least at the moment, the Cobb family find myself here to try and find out what happened to them. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Resourceful and intelligent chap like yourself, you know, Mr. Wakewood, that I'm sure be happy to help us get this matter sorted out, expedited without any bother. To be honest with you, I rather thought when I arrived here I'd be chatting to lots of interesting people, but mostly looking at useful books. Now I've done rather a lot of the former, not so much of the latter. So, 
should we help us out <laughs> and all just go back to what we are meant to be doing? Uh, I'll, I'll make a charm roll, nice. perhaps, at this point. Um, well, let's see. Uh, how, Mike, how did you get on with your psychology? No, that was a fail. That was uh, well, very... He very seems well very genial. He seems very genial. He was more than happy to discuss his family history. Um, and... <laughs> I, we, is, it, is, it, is it fair He doesn't to, have a family. Is it fair to say that my provocation of the Kaziah Mason case gives me an opportunity to... I mean, aside from the physical reaction, which, I made, which has made me very nervous, and I'm now handling my cane somewhat anxiously, uh, and the hidden blade within it... Uh, but uh, but uh, have I picked up anything else apart from the fact that he locked the door, which is revealing itself? No, no, no. He's he's turned round in the doorway and um, and he's still smiling. And um, he says uh, to Doctor Montrose, um, "I don't think you do need a charm roll." Actually, he says, um, "My actually, mm, actually, do give me a charm roll just in case." <laughs> <laughs> just what? Just in case of a fumble? <laughs> yeah, it, it's. Uh, um, the 97 is a palpable fail, but of course, I'm going to push the roll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she's I mean, trying. I completely jinxed you on that one. <laughs> she is trying to be pleasant and affable. And, uh, mm -hmm. well, how did she respond to that in the first instance, in any case? And she smiles. She says a lot of peace and smiles. Um, he's smiling, but it's kind of like a fixed smile. He hasn't blinked in a while. <laughs> okay. All right then, Mr. Uh, Wick. I'll be quite blunt with you. I, uh, mm -hmm. for some reason, I've found myself involved in pursuing stolen papers, uh, a murder, a black magic sex cult, and most recently, a rather last <laughs> date. And the involvement of the Atlantic City mob. No, this has all come as something of a surprise to me, but uh, if I were you, I'd pay attention mostly to the last day. Because the two gentlemen that we came across earlier on today, very, very interested what happened to those papers and indeed what happened to Mr. Leiter. Now, if you help us out, we can get this sorted out without their involvement. But if you don't, then I rather think we will be paying you a visit very, very soon and maybe interested in picking up for the good doctor left off around the operation of this nice little forgery ring with you and young Cecil. So why don't you tell me where the fucking papers are and I will get out of the shop. And I'll make an intimidating check at that point. <laughs> yes, by all means. That's a zero seven. Oh. That's an extreme success oh. on oh, my wow. timidity of sixty one. Can, can, can I take advantage of this change of tack by Doctor Montrose to try and push my psychology role? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I'm too intimidated. <laughs> yes, we all, we should all make. She's uh, still smiling as she's saying all of this, but she, she has a different look in her eyes, and you know, she said a certain rude word, which you know, you might not expect to come from an Icelandic lady like that, but. Well, she is Scottish. She is Scottish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we just can't uh, fucking help it. <laughs> Lord dear fucking majesty. <laughs> uh, yes, I succeeded there. I got 43 that time. You see him stagger backwards into the door uh, and the, the bell actually rings a little bit as, he, as his huge body slams into the door. And he's sort of... Oh, but um, PJ, you realise he's not... This is a show. He's not genuinely afraid, but to the rest of you, it seems like he is. And he says, um, Oh, madam, I, I uh, do forgive me. I didn't mean to cause you any, any upset. I, I, I see you're a very forward and formidable woman. I, I like that. No, forgive me. It has been a very unusual couple I of can days. imagine. I can and imagine. Everything that involves Dr. Leiter is unusual. Just a little overwhelmed. Excuse my language, but. If you would just care to help us out, tell us what you know and be most obliged. I would very much like to help you. And indeed, I think um, the more I can help you, the better I will in turn be helped by uncovering this horrible 
mess that we have all found ourselves in. I was hoping that sooner or later someone would come along with some answers. Um, well, let us see. Well, this is this is not the right setting to be discussing these things. Um, how about dinner? My treat, Crawford's Restaurant, tonight? 8.30? Nine. Do I get the impression that he's just bullshitting? Uh, no, actually, he, it sounds like a genuine offer of the dinner. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's well, that's saying. Do you know Crawford's restaurant? We can discuss everything there. Um, there is probably a lot to discuss. Unfortunately, if I knew where the papers were, I would tell you. But sadly, I don't. However, it sounds like if that's your priority, um, we may be able to help one another out. Certainly I might have some information that might lead you in the right direction. And if you are in the right direction, perhaps you might be able to share some of your findings with me. Whoa. I wouldn't worry too much about um, the gentleman from Atlantic City. Oh, really? Oh, I have, I have persuasive ways when it comes to dealing with um, criminals. <laughs> I'm sure they have your persuasive ways... Two, but uh, good luck with that. Why, why, why wait until tonight? Why not? Why not have a nice sit down and a and a cup of coffee? Well, I suppose we could go to Crawford's now. Have you eaten lunch? Ah, uh, we had a bite. Oh, that won't do at all. A bite, a bite. No, 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 no. A proper lunch. And he he walks over to the um. In fact, no, he calls. He calls down to the end of the shop, and he says um. What's this? Somebody else says uh. Hector! And then fucks Hector. Hector! Hector! Yes, master! <laughs> That's literally what happens. Um, <laughs> As played by Denon. <laughs> In the shadows at the back of the shop, there is a doorway, um, which now creaks open, and there is a very gaunt, a very pale figure stood in the shadows. You can't quite make him out. And he says, um, yes, Mr. Wick. Yes. Could you call through to Crawford's uh, table in half an hour? Uh, table four. Four. Tell them it's Mr. Wick. And the door just shuts. You hear footsteps going down. Tell them to boil the big pot. <laughs> Do I get the impression that um, the reason he wants to go out to the restaurant is to be in a public place rather than in a private place? Oh, that's that's interesting. Um... Mm, it's hard to be sure. What did you get on your psychology? Uh, it's just a no normal success. success. Just a normal success. Oh, sure. um, yeah, it's hard to be sure. Mm, okay, yeah. But you can you can give me a psychology role if you want, if you can get a hard... In terms of motivation, is it all right if I join in on that? Because I'm a bit baffled. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I've been a bit back foot. Yeah, that is uh, not quite an extreme success. He seems very excited by the idea of going for food. <laughs> He's m definitely more interested in having lunch than uh, than being in public. Right, okay. His little pincers are clicking excitedly. That seems to be his priority right now. <laughs> They're going to have yeah. something to eat. Mm. Uh, Steinweg says, uh, I think, of course, we have our colleagues to consider. We have said that we would meet them. I also, I, I think it, it, these matters might be better discussed in, in uh, more discreet circumstances than in a crowded restaurant. Oh, Mr. Mahoney, you've obviously never eaten at Crawford's. No, sir, I have not. I have not. A uh, little out of my league. Uh, very, very discreet, very discreet. That's what the money pays for, you see. <laughs> my treat, my treat, my treat. <laughs> it's only because we have um, some colleagues who we were hoping to meet up with. Perhaps I might confer with you, Dr. Montrose. Well, I, I rather hope that we would uh, reconvene. Well, why don't why don't uh, you all head over to this uh, Crawford's? Uh, I could uh, run across back to the university and uh, and let the others know, and we could meet you there. How, do, how does that sound? Uh, not that I wish to take advantage of your very kind offer, Mister Vic. Of course, it's not it's it's not to suggest that we would wish to <laughs> add to the bill, but it is more that. Uh, um, you know, there were there there were arrangements in place, and I was wondering whether perhaps um, we needed to talk about that. But I'm very happy to go with what you suggest there, PJ. Yeah, and um, Mr. Mahoney. Ah, uh, that's that's fine. PJ is fine. 
Everybody calls me PJ. My mind is just casting back uh, as I'm saying that. Uh, I, I was thinking about the reflective surfaces that we were seeing as we were walking in. This is this place covered in curious mirrors or anything like that, or uh, no, no, no. Thank you. There's all kinds of junk. Yeah, all kinds of junk. I'll tell you what you can do though, if you want, because you're stood quite close to him right now. You can give me a spot hidden, but I'd need an extreme success. Mm, uh, that zero one was wasted at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I failed. <laughs> but I'm more than happy to push it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what so here's the question. If if I wow. if I push a roll that I'm looking for an extreme success and I don't I get a success but not an extreme success, does that count as a failure? Um I'd say it, if you get a success but not an extreme success, you won't get what you want, mm. but you won't suffer any right. consequences. I think that's fair. Yeah, so um so I I I I've still got this um this candlestick well not this candlestick, this lamp stand in, in my hand and I'll mm. kind of lean lean across him uh to to put it back um onto uh, a, a a a Welsh dresser that I've spotted sitting on the other side of the shop. Um and uh yeah, so I'm doing that. I'm just going to... It's more the, to try and kind of eye him up. I want to see if he's carrying a concealed weapon or something like that, because I don't trust this guy, regardless. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, yeah, he could he could have anything under that uh, that'd be that jacket of his. It is a success, but it's not an extreme success. I, I too, have failed. Um, yeah, there's nothing... Particularly now she's That's a very fine cigar you are you have there, uh, sir. Would you care for one? Oh well, I I don't mind if I do. Uh, uh, I do like a, a cigar for a special occasion. Oh. Nothing more special than making new friends. Does Mahoney put it in his pocket? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So later, yeah. Very, very 1920s. Much appreciated. I'm just I'm just thinking this spot hidden. I feel like it's important. Wow. I feel like there's something important that we're missing. So maybe I should try and push my failed roll. I think you should. I absolutely think you should. Mm. And I think, I think in the um, <laughs> oh dear. in the distraction of Mahoney leaning across with this thing, and then and the cigar changing hands, um, and the fact that Montrose is sort of, while she's led us in this whole encounter. I feel like she's just kind of gone a bit quiet and is just staring at this guy. <laughs> she's for- forgotten herself somewhat. And she's clearly going to have the last say, I think. Yeah, well, you know. I think I do a slightly weird, slightly um, elvish, but not in the kind of cool sense of Tolkien elf, the kind of weird German elvish, skitter across to the side to look at him weirdly, as if as if I'm in analysis with him. <laughs> Uh, and I sort of look at the side of his face and I go, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Um, uh, as this weird cigar handover is happening. And I have rolled... What, do I need an extreme? Uh, yeah. Oh, shit, I've only got a hard. Damn it! <laughs> you know, all you, all you can tell is, you know, he's, his flesh is quite... His skin is very pallid um, and he stinks of this aftershave that he puts on. Okay, so now Joseph is now convinced he's dead. Um... Uh, clearly he's a corpse. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable <laughs> assumption, given the circumstances. I think, yeah, so Steinweg, Steinweg's now sort of hovering slightly weirdly and then looks back at Montrose. Yes, Doctor. And, uh, she says, what will we do? Are we... So, Mr. Mr. Mahoney, you're going to go and collect your colleague. Yes, yes, sir. Join us at Crawford. Uh, I, I, uh, yes, I, I know where it is. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll meet you there. Excellent. Well, shall we take the... Um, the, the Ford. The Bentley. <laughs> take the, the, the Packard. I'll, uh, I'll take the bus. Carla! And then um, the door opens and a, uh, a a figure that looks exactly like Hector comes out. But as as um, as they approach, you realise it's a, it's a woman. And um, he says, uh, Could you ready the car? We're going to Crawford's. And she sort of nods and goes out the back. Let's cut over to uh, Lighter's Cottage on campus. I- I'm now um, inc- uh, exceedingly relaxed about this <laughs> because it feels like the-, the biggest threat is going on somewhere else. 
Yeah, as you approach it, it's, it's a two-story um, cottage. Uh, there's, an, there's a sort of front porch, um, and it's got nicely appointed grounds. It's, it, you know, there's sort of trees that give a lot of privacy away from the, the neighbouring um, neighboring cottages. Um, as you pull up, it's very quiet. There's a bit of rain still coming down. You can hear it sort of rustling the trees. The wind is... But it's, Let's, it's relatively quiet. Listen, Duckworth, I, uh, I got some thoughts about it, how to handle this. Feel, feel free to uh, chip in. But um, there was a suggestion that the dean might be able to give us keys to this place. I don't suppose it involves posing as a janitor or... <laughs> That's funny you should suggest that. I wasn't thinking janitor, but that, that that's worth considering. No, I was going to say that there was a suggestion that Dean might give us uh, keys to this place, but but I, I don't want to, I don't want to alert anyone to our presence. So, what what say you uh, follow my lead? Another pair of eyes, another pair of ears. You got ears under that thing? I can't tell. I've got one. I'll take that as a yes. All right, that's something. Okay, so what? What? <laughs> what? Say you follow my lead. We uh, we scope out the joint, have a little look in the windows, listen. Well, anyone in there? And then we then we make our assault on the back door, maybe. Yes, I have a counter suggestion. Um, perhaps we walk up to the front door and knock on it, and see if anyone answers. And I think that's an, that's an incredibly bad idea. If you don't mind me saying so, why is someone in there? I don't. I don't think. I don't think we want them to know that we're here. I think let's let's use our eyes and ears first. I mean, as far as we're aware, the likelihood is it's empty, and the only person likely to be in there is either university staff or a disenfranchised art student. I don't see the danger myself. No, I'm not talking danger. I'm talking. Maybe you find so you catch someone in uh, in their element. You know, in my line of work, sometimes you go into a, a joint. You want to find someone. You want to catch them doing what they were doing before they saw you, rather than opening the door after they've already hidden their business. You know what I'm saying? I see. I see. Well, how's about this? We merge our plans. I will simply approach the front door and knock, while you go around to the back. If the door is answered, that gives you all the time you want to snoop around whilst I engage whoever's inside in conversation. Um, if it's not answered, we know there's no one in and we can either find a key or get in by some other means, as you suggest. I I, I like it. I, I might I suggest that before you even knock on that front door, we both make a circuit of the, the house. We both use our eyes and ears to uh, yes. take a look at what's going on. This seems reasonable. Excellent. Right. Okay. So could we could we both um, make a sort of stealthy circuit around the house, just looking for? I'd like to be looking for signs of uh, signs of life in the house. Looking in looking in the windows with a mm. would it be fair to circuit the house and give you a spot hidden roll or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Why don't you do that? I shall do the same. So Duckworth. Yeah, I was going to say. Yes. I'll give you a little crash course in. Uh, PI work. Just follow my lead. Uh, okay. Uh, I so that's a regular success. Regular success on spot hidden from me. Okay. I got a regular success as well. I figure I'm looking to. So. Um. So as you as you circuit the building, you, like the windows that you can see through, the, the curtains are drawn. A lot of the rooms. Um. You see into the study where there's um there's a lot of clutter, paperwork, sort of all over the desk. It looks um. It looks very sort of disorganised. As you get to the back, there's a back porch. The door, the back door looks brand new. It looks like it's recently been replaced. Like brand spanking new. Uh, the rest is sort of quite weather-beaten. Apart from that, you don't really notice anything that unusual. Um, can I can I tell whether the, um, from my little circuit, can I tell whether it looks like the... The front or the back door has the easier lock to pick. You say the back door is brand new. Is it like uh, you know, yes, big deadbolts and stuff, yeah. or is it? Well, as you get closer, you realise it's yes, it's got brand new bolts on it. Okay, so I report this to 
to Duckworth, who presumably is looking at it as well. You see what I see? This mm. this door looks like yeah. it's been put in by someone who was uh, concerned by, yeah, you know, who recently had his back door smashed in. All right, so yes, what say? Uh, <laughs> what say we? Maybe, maybe we go have a listen. Listen, at, you, you you take the. Why don't you take the back door? I take the front. Uh, all right, as long as um, we promise to uh, meet up again before we uh, action anything more drastic. Understood, understood. Well, why don't we stick together then? Let's both listen at the back door. Follow my lead. <laughs> let's, let's all have a listen at the back door. Let's all have a listen at the back door. Can I listen at the back door? Yeah, give me a listen roll, yeah. 82, I didn't hear anything. I have... I'm going to spend a lot of luck. I'm going to spend 22 points of luck. <laughs> because... Because sleep doesn't want to lose face <laughs> for the duck worth. Oh, sorry for that awful turn of phrase. <laughs> um, yeah, so that gives me a regular success of my um, on my listen roll. Uh, Duckworth <laughs> presses his, you know, porcelain face to the to the door, but can't hear anything. Sleep, on the other hand, you press your Near to the door, and you you hear something. You hear this sort of childish giggle. <laughs> You'll never find me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, when you say childish giggle, does it sound like a child or just like an adult giving a childish giggle? No, a child. An adult giving a childish. Giggle. Oh, okay, right, right. So I um I drag I drag Duckworth away from the door and I say, "There's some there's someone in there. There's someone in there, and they don't they don't sound right in the head." I heard like a like a giggle, like a like a like a kid's chuckle, but it's a, so a, a child. No, no, it's a grown man, but mm, not right in the head. I see. No, I, and what were they saying? They said, they said, "You'll never find me. You'll never find me." And do you believe they were talking to you? No, no, it's talking it's a to madman in there. Talk, talking to himself. That's someone's crackers. Someone. Well, there's two of us here. We don't have anything to fear. Dulali. Dula- um, I want to just, I want to walk up to the door and just knock my cane on it. There's no reply. Are you sure you heard this? I'm not questioning you, but... Uh... I, I'm, I'm there, like, aghast. My jaw drops at the fact that he's just walked straight up to the door and knocked on it. Uh, uh, and I would like to do a, 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 psych- a psychology role on Duckworth to find out whether he's, like... Is he trying to sabotage this mission? Uh, that My psychology is awful, so I failed. Um, he's definitely trying to sabotage this mission. <laughs> But I'm, I'm like sort of under my breath, saying, "What? What the hell are you doing? What? What? Well, what? What are you playing at?" If there's a person in there, be it a child or a mentally ill adult, um, either way, I'm not sure we're at risk. I mean, they're locked inside this house. We may as well see if we. You just you just stay put. I'm getting around the front, and I I I run around the front. As you as you're walking around the front, it occurs to you that. As you, you're thinking this over, you realise that you're alone here with a member of faculty. It's possible he could be working with Lighter and could have been working with Lighter this whole time, and this all could be a, you know... Oh, fuck. Oh, He's here to sabotage you, clearly. Better shoot him, just to be on the safe side. I, um, I, <laughs> I follow behind you, by the way. Sort of almost at a light jog. Do I, no, do I see him following behind me? I'm not trying to hide it. Do I see him following behind me? You're not trying to hide then yet, then yet. Duckworth, yeah. what, what the hell are you playing at? I said, follow my lead. Listen, I, there's someone in there. We don't want him to get out. Stay by the back door. I'll go to the front door. No. You want to take the front door? Take the front door. But stop following me around like a fucking shadow. What are you, some kind of ghost? Now listen, sleep. I said I would follow your lead briefly, but if you just remember back to earlier today, there was several times I followed your lead, and things got a little bit messy, didn't they? You shot a student... Um, you you had a bit of a psychological slip. 
Um, these things happen to all of us. It's nothing to be ashamed of. But I'm sure you can understand why I'm, you know, concerned about you, your your state of mind. I don't want you to uh, feel I'm following you, or I don't. Look, I don't. I, this 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 ain't a, this ain't the time for me to be speaking to a shrink. This is a time for us to do a proper job on this house. You take one door, I'll take the other. Okay? I'll, I'll try no, 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 and, no, yeah, no, I'll, no. Sleep. I'll try and Jimmy the lock. As far as we know, well, how is that worse than me knocking on the door? How, well, I don't see what we're going to get out of this. If there is a mentally in, ill individual in the house, surely we should try to, you know, reason with them. Uh, at least do something other than smash uh, abs- uh, Absolutely, but uh, but I don't want them to be escaping out the back door while you're following me around the front door like some kind of, like, shadow or... Okay. Duple, duple ginger, like the other crazy professor said. I see, I see. Well, calm now. I agree as far as to that. So if I go back to the back door, you promise me not to um, pull out your weapon or do anything that might upset this individual who could be quite. Um... I take out, I take out, I take out my gun and, and give it to uh, give it to Duckworth, and I say, if you so, if that's what you're concerned about, you take it. Thank you. I, that's a gesture of trust that means a lot to me. I'll go to the back door, um, and I'll trust you to act in our best interests. I'll make sure no one escapes while you make your way inside. Yeah, you see anyone shoot him in the leg. Works. I see. Yes. I will. I sort of <laughs> tuck the gun into my waistband and <laughs> hobble back around the house. So I make my way to the front door, Um I'd like to have a listen at the front door as well now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I can spend any more luck, so that's a, it's a fail. Not a bad fail. Um, I, I would like to try to... Um, well, first I'll just try the door to see if it's unlocked. It is. It's unlocked? Yes. Except it's not. It's The, uh, the lock is broken. The wood is splintered. It's been carefully done, but it's broken. The door opens. <laughs> I'd like to try and avoid that squeak. Ah. Uh, um, okay, yeah. Do I need a, to do a stealth roll for that or anything? Or um, Give me give me a dex roll to see if you catch it quickly enough. Unless stealth is better. No, de- dex, is, dex is fine. Yes, that's a, that's a hard success on my dex. Yeah, you managed to stop the door from swinging. Okay, so... So um, let's say I don't hear of this from the back door. No. So I'm just waiting there patiently. Yeah. Nervously. Yeah. You're really patient. Can I see... Is it, is it a re, it's a relatively small cottage. Can I see the back door from where I am? Uh, that's a good question. Um, or can I at least see how to... No. ...get to it? So it actually opens, it opens straight into the living room. And your foot... The first thing you tread on is, a, is an envelope on the floor... You 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 know you feel the different texture. You realise there's an envelope that's been pushed through the letterbox that uh, has been ignored. No. Okay. I pick it up and have a little look at the outside of it. Uh, it has some blood on it. Oh fuck's sake! Um, is it does it is it internal university mail or is it um, like a you know regular postal service? No, it's addressed to um, to Doctor Lighter, and it has a stamp on it, which is Arkham Asylum. Mm. Your test results, Mr. Light. Okay. Um I I want to get I want to get to the um I want to get to the back door. Um I want to sort of get to the back door without mm. making any noise <laughs> and then and open it and let let in uh, Duckworth. Can I stealth my way to the back door? Yes. Can you also give me a spot hidden? Yes. Um so I'm going to spend some luck on my spot hidden. So that's a regular success on my spot hidden. You realise you have to... Get, you sort of open the door in opposite. Uh, there's a staircase in the in the living room as well. There's two doors opposite you, uh, one of which you open. It's a, it's, um, a closet. Uh, the other opens into his study. And you realise that to get through to the back, you're going to have to go through the double doors on the left... But as you open the door to the study, there is a there is a sort of um, among the bookcases there are a couple of uh, sort of closets, and one of them is slightly ajar. And you notice a bloody footprint in the middle of the carpet of the study. 
Just the one. Mm. Yeah. How did you get with, on with your stealth? Oh, I haven't rolled that yet. Huh. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, I'm going to spend some more luck. <laughs> <laughs> right, I pass why not? Scout. Why not push it? Yeah. <laughs> if you need to think about it, then you might as well just push it. I should have pushed my spot hidden. I should have pushed my spot hidden up. My stealth isn't quite good enough. Um, um, no, it's too really. It's too late to wreck on that. No, I'm I'm spending the luck. I'm spending the luck. Oh fuck! Am I? Okay. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm gonna. I am gonna. I am gonna push my stealth because if I fail, I still succeed on my stealth. So just something else goes wrong, right? Right. You won't succeed in being stealthy if you push it and you fail. <laughs> really? <laughs> but something... <laughs> in, 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 sometimes, something. Sometimes you can push and succeed, but not always. That's not a rule. Yeah, I suppose, so, yeah. That's um, just a, a keeper's choice, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So a that's fail forward. <laughs> I'm going to spend I'm gonna spend that luck. That was the first thing I did. Something I will luck. happen. <laughs> so, um, tell me, this one footstep, one bloody footstep in the middle of the room, and no others. One bloody footstep. Um. Now you're looking around. Yeah, there's 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 telltale signs. It's not a really clear footprint. It's just that's that's one that stands out. It looks like there is a bit of a trail from the front door to here. And can I see, can I now see the back door? Do you investigate this this uh, closet situation? You're gonna go. You're just gonna try and find the back door. Can I no? Can I see the back door from when I, from where I am or not? No. Like, would it be possible for me to get to the back door, keeping my eyes on the closet? No. You'd have to back up and then go uh, through the double doors that were on your left when you came in. It's a weirdly arranged cottage. The hallway is like in the middle of the cottage. I'd like to take my I'd like to take my blackjack out of my pocket and make my way towards the closet. And as I do so, I'd like to yell, Duckworth. There's no one in here. Come on in the front door. I assume I hear this, or do you need to listen or No, you can hear that, I think. In which case, I do as he says. And that's what you shout? Yeah. I start making my way around to the front door. Okay. As soon as you shout, the closet flies open. Yeah. And Anthony Flinders leaps out. Fucking Flinders again! <laughs> well, as soon as he leaps out... Christ. <laughs> His legs sort of bandaged up, but it's sort of matted with with blood. He's obviously like fucked his leg doing this. Yeah, hobbling out here. He's still wearing a, a hospital gown that is also slightly bloody. You can see his pendant that he's wearing, and he takes out this sort of ceremonial dagger. <laughs> Fuck! And he says, uh, <laughs> his eyes are sort of wild, and he says, "Ah, I was so wrong. I thought, I thought." that it was Fallon and Roach, but it's you. I know it now. That's why you try to shoot me, because before he finishes speaking, I work him round the head with my blackjack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> give, me a, give me a roll. Okay. Um, that's a brawl roll, right? Fighting brawl roll. Yeah, regular success. Yeah. So I roll for damage. Well... Oh, he might fight back. <laughs> he never knows. Uh, yeah. He's got a dagger. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. I think I might kill him. <laughs> no, he uh, he misses entirely. So he sort of he's still ranting and saying, "It was you. That's why you try to shoot me. You're in the league with them, but now you've fallen into my trap. Hail Satan!" And he, oh, he sort of comes at you with a knife. Um, but you, you took a sort of step to the side and cosh him on the head. I was um, ready. I had it out ready. I was expecting it to come out. Roll for damage. Someone. Okay, I roll for damage. Oh shit, man! I can't believe the amount of damage that does. Eight damage. <laughs> night, night, Mister Flinders. Oh dear. <laughs> yes. Your wound. Yeah, so he failed his constitution roll, so he you knock him unconscious. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> um, and as you do, Duckworth comes in through the front door, 
and uh, you sort of get a chance to see um, what's what's happened in here. But then you both hear something upstairs. The floorboards shift. And then you hear this deep, guttural, snarling... <laughs> This was an Apocalypse Players production. For more information about the podcast, go to apocalypseplayers.com. Thanks for listening. Mike lost a character many years ago falling down some stairs, so I don't know if that counts as well. You never let me hear the end of that. No, that was never. 20 years 20 ago. 20 years ago, before I even started playing D&D with you, but I'll still... And it was a set of stairs. It wasn't just a set of stairs. It was a fucking ziggurat. Many. And the reason I got I fell down the stairs was because a zombie pterodactyl flew out of me out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 I nearly died falling into some drums. <laughs> it was so. Oh my god! Yeah. Right, I nearly died. <laughs> Fall, falling into a drum kit. The, the drums. You know. The drums at Juju House. It's a whole. It's yeah. a you whole fell into thing. the bongos at Juju House. <laughs>